okay class good morning to everyone today we are going to revise chapter number 2 uh, in the past two weeks we have completed the whole chapter 2 we have done exercise 2a exercise 2b and the multiple choice questions of chapter 2 there were a lot of problems so a lot of you have been asking questions on whatsapp also and i think i have tried to clear it as much as i could but still we are going to we are going to do the revision and if anyone has any question they have to raise their hand please okay they have to raise their hand okay first of all you guys don't need to worry about your attendance okay after 40 minutes when the class ends i will start the class again and when you rejoin i will mark the attendance of all the students who have rejoined okay so please stay active in the class keep asking questions related to chapter 2 only okay now let's start okay so we started off with natural numbers and whole numbers it was very easy the definitions were given to you on the slides what are natural numbers okay now the numbers that we used to be used to do counting okay the numbers that we use to do counting or to count things are called natural numbers they start from 1 2 3 4 and they go so on okay now remember that it does not include zero natural number does not include zero it starts from 1 it goes on till 2 3 4 5 and it goes then on and on and on and on okay so now if we have to make a set of natural numbers we did sets in chapter number 1 how do we make set we denote the natural numbers by a capital n now you can denote the name by any alphabet but we use the capital letter n you write is equal to you put the curly brackets and you write 1 2 3 4 5 and you put these dots in the end these dots are called ellipses ellipses is used to mark infinity because natural number is an infinite set because it starts with 1 2 3 4 and it goes on and on and on and on and on and it, it is never ending okay i will take a pause here so by here you are raising your hand beta i am not taking any question right now i i think you have joined date we are going to only revise chapter 2 today we are only revising chapter 2 today if you have any question regarding chapter 2 please raise your hand okay right now uh, i lower your hand you just listen to this that i am explaining just let me explain the definition of natural number and whole number first okay okay so natural numbers are starting with one and going on and on and on okay now next we move to the set of natural number n we just studied it is n is equal to 1 2 3 4 5 and it goes so on so if you have to make a set of even natural numbers what are even numbers 2 4 6 8 10 12 <clears throat> 14 16 18 and it goes on and on so what we do is we just write the first four or five elements like 2 4 6 8 and 10 separated by commas and then we put the dots in the end to mark infinity similar is the case for odd numbers when you are making the set of odd such natural numbers you denote it with o and you put the numbers 1 3 5 7 and so on and on and on and it can go on till a million and a trillion and a billion so it goes on and on so we just put an ellipsis at the end okay now if you look carefully class on the bottom of the screen i have written e is a subset of n and o is a subset of n so what does this mean that e is a smaller set and n is a bigger set okay now look n has all the numbers all the odd numbers all the even numbers but e only has even numbers so e is said to be the subset of n because n is a bigger set and it has all the elements that are present in e n has all the elements of e when n has all the elements of e it means n is a bigger set e is a smaller set So you say e is a subset of n. And similar is the case with the odd numbers. So odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, and you can say that the natural numbers, the set of natural numbers n has all the elements of the set of odd numbers, and therefore it is O is a subset of n. 
okay when a, when n is a bigger set and e is a smaller set you can also say that n is a super set so here i have made this sign so n is a super set of e <coughs> sorry and n is a super set of o <coughs> Okay, now moving forward, the next slide. Okay, we read this number number ray. Okay, this number ray is a line. Okay, where the, all the natural numbers are written in ascending order and separated by equal space. Now, what does this mean? That all the natural numbers means one, two, three, four, and so on. They are written on a number ray and they are separated by equal spaces. Like there is an equal space between four and five, between five and six, between six and seven. Okay, two things that you need to note down, two things that you need to be very clear about is, and you need to remember that the number ray of natural numbers always start with a point A. Always start with a point A, and the arrow indicates at the end there is an arrow pointing towards the right, it indicates that the number ray extends infinitely. It marks infinite. Okay. Yes, Sarah, question. Sir, you are repeating the chapter. Yes, beta. We are revising chapter two. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, class. So moving on to the next slide, the whole numbers. What are whole numbers? Whole numbers consist of zero and all natural numbers. Okay, so whole numbers starts with zero and includes all all natural numbers. Okay. Now suppose if I ask you that if 2 is a natural number and a whole number, you can say yes, it is a natural number as well as a whole number. But if I ask what is 0, then 0 is only a whole number and not a natural number. Okay. If you guys remember, we did a question in exercise 2a. So 0 is a whole number and not a natural number. Okay. Now, if we have to make a set of whole numbers, you can do it similarly, like, just like we did set of natural numbers. The difference is that we are going to denote it with capital W and the elements included in the set will start with zero. So it will be zero. Look at the screen class, zero, one, two, three, four, and so on. Okay. Okay, so I think uh, some of you cannot see the screen, so I'm going to share it again. Okay. I hope everyone can see this screen now. Okay, class. So what we are doing is we are making the set of whole numbers. We denote it with capital W. We start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, the dots in the end are called ellipses. Ellipses is to mark infinity. So it is an infinite set. Okay, now if you remember the set of natural number n was starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, and w is starting with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I say that W contains all elements of N, okay, W contains all elements of the set N means that W is a bigger set and N, N is a smaller set. So we can say N is a subset of W. Okay, class, if you want to keep up with me from the book also, you can open number, open page number 20 right now, okay? Page number 20 and 21, we are on, on the, uh, in your books, okay? Page 20, you can open, or you can just look at the slides also. Okay, now class, moving on to the next slide. Okay, number ray for whole number, it is going to be similar to, it is going to be similar to natural number, and the only difference here is that it is not going to start with the point A, rather it is going to start with 0. If you see on the screen, it is going to start with 0. Okay, class. So the only difference between the number A of whole number and natural number is that natural number starts with the point A and the number of whole numbers start with the point zero. Always, always make sure that there is equal space between the numbers and you put a arrow pointing towards the right in the end. 
This is very important that you have to put the arrow pointing towards the right at the end. It indicates that it is infinite. Okay, class. Then we move on to addition rule and subtraction rule. Okay, you can see on page number twenty. Yes, page number twenty, class. You can see some rules of natural and whole numbers. The first rule was addition rule. Okay, now this is very uh, simple to understand that when you are adding two natural numbers, okay, the result is always going to be a natural number. And if you are adding two whole numbers, the result is always going to be a whole number. For example, look at this first example on the screen: ten plus ninety. Is equals to hundred. Okay, here you can see this ten plus ninety is equals to hundred. This says that ten is a natural number, ninety is a natural number. When you are adding them, the answer hundred is also a natural number. Okay, now similarly, if you look, if you look at the second example, this one. Okay, this one here, you are adding two whole numbers. Zero is a whole number. Ten is also a whole number. So the answer is coming ten. That is also whole number. So this is called the closure property. What it is called? Closure property of addition. Okay. Now you have to remember this name because we are going to use this name of property in our lecture today many times. Okay. Okay. Now moving forward. Moving forward. Moving forward. Class. So we have now we have. Okay, look how we are adding on a number ray. This number ray is telling us how we are adding. So this is an example. It is saying five plus four. Okay, so five plus four we know is equal to nine. But how you are representing it on a number ray is when you are given five plus four, you take the first number five. This first number five, you start with here. Okay, on the number you can see this five. Okay, you directly move to the five. You start from here. And now, when you have to add four, what you do is you add one four times. Okay, so one, two, three, and four, and you end up with the answer nine. So this is how you represent addition on a number ray. Okay. Okay, class. One more important thing: a lot of students uh, have joined the class late today. I know there is a very big problem of load shedding everywhere, and everyone is suffering. Everyone is finding it difficult to attend the classes on time or at all. So please don't worry. What we are doing today, I am going to repeat. What we are going to do today is we are going to just revise chapter number two. I have put everyone on mute today. So if anyone has any question, they have to raise their hand. But please make sure the question is related to chapter two only. If you have any other question other than chapter two, if you have any question other than chapter two, please write it down somewhere or remember the question. I will take the question after that class. Okay, after the class, I am going to take questions that are not from chapter two. So if you have any question, if relevant question, please don't ask right now, and we'll continue with our work. Okay, so now we move on to the next slide. Okay, subtraction rule. One of the rules was addition rule. Now we are going to do subtraction rule. Okay, class. Subtraction rule is saying that when a natural number is subtracted from another natural number, the result may not be a natural. Now, what does this mean? May not be a natural number means that it can be a natural number and it cannot be a natural number. So. In addition. We saw that the closure property is there. That when you add natural numbers, the answer is a natural number, and when you add whole numbers, the answer is a whole number. So that is called the closure property of addition. But in subtraction, the closure property is not valid. The closure property does not apply. So the closure property is not available in subtraction. Why? Look at the example. Look, if I write 50 minus 60. Now, whenever you subtract a larger number, whenever you subtract a larger number, here it is 50. From a smaller number, that is 50, the answer is always going to be negative. 
now negative numbers are not natural numbers and they are not whole numbers so we can say that when we subtracted two natural numbers like 50 and 60 are two natural numbers the answer is not a natural number okay now similar is the case if you deduct 80 from 80 okay if you if you are uh, saying that these are whole numbers 80 and 80 are whole numbers the answer 0 is a whole number okay but it is not a natural number now <clears throat> look if i say 80 and 80 are natural number so 80 minus 80 is equal to 0 means that 0 is not a natural number so the closure property does not apply here okay okay sara uh, i'm going to unmute you can ask the question yes sara Sarah, you have any question? Better please ask. Yes, sir. Yes. Ask. Sir, ah, uh, ah, uh, minus ten, na wo natural number na na wo whole number. Sarah, English please, English. Sir, ten, a uh, minus ten was not a natural number and whole number. Yes, better. It is not a natural number. It is not a whole number. Okay, we studied that natural numbers are starting from one, two, three, four, and they go on, and whole numbers start from zero. Okay, negative numbers are uh, below zero and below one okay they, they are negative numbers that we are going to do later in the next chapter so you can just ignore it right now okay just understand that negative numbers are not natural numbers and not whole numbers okay sir okay sir Okay, so Sabha, uh, better we are just doing addition and subtraction rule. It is on page 20 and 21. These are very easy rules. That's the closure property. Okay, so just a short revision quickly, class. If you are adding two natural numbers or you are adding two whole numbers, the answer will be a natural number or a whole number. So that is the closure property. If you are subtracting two natural numbers or two whole numbers, the answer may not be natural number or a whole number. So that means that there is no closure property in subtraction okay class moving forward properties of zero we did the additive identity was the first identity it was saying that if you add zero to any natural number or whole number the answer if you add zero to any number the answer will not change the answer will remain the same okay so if you add zero to 15 the answer is coming 15 this means that the number is not going to change okay then number two when zero is multiplied by any number the answer is always zero these all properties are on page 21. Okay, I'm going quickly through it so we can move forward class. So if you're multiplying zero by any number, the answer is zero. Okay, now next. The third property of zero is when you when zero is divided by any number except zero, the result is always zero. Look why it is written except zero. Now class, look carefully. This second number is 12. The first number is zero. This is read as zero divided by 12 okay so 0 divided by 12 is equals to 0 but if i write 0 in the place of 12 and 12 in the place of 0 this means 12 divided by 0 now look class this is a mathematics rule that you need to understand and you need to remember that you can never divide any number by 0 you can never divide you can never divide any number by 0 so that's why it is written if 0 is divided by any number, like 0 is divided by 12 here in the example, except 0. Why except 0? Because you cannot divide by 0. In maths, you cannot divide anything by 0. So you say that when 0 is divided by any number, the result is always 0. So three things. If you add 0 to a number, the number remains the same. The answer will be the number itself. If you multiply any number by 0, the answer is going to be 0. And if you divide 0 by any number, the answer is going to be 0. Okay, then we, uh, are on, then we did the properties of 1. The first property was multiplicative identity. This means that if you multiply 12, uh, if you multiply any number by 1, the answer is the number itself. For example, if we multiply 12 by 1, the answer is going to be 12. Then division. Division was saying that if you divide any number by 1, you divide any number by one the number will not change the number will remain there itself okay
Okay, class. Then the next, we did exercise 2A. Okay, we'll move forward from it because we have done exercise 2A in the class. Everyone has these answers, okay? And there were no questions in this. This was fairly easy. We are going to move on to the difficult things right now. Okay, so exercise 2 was very easy. Exercise 2A was easy. Okay, after that, we started these four operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now, this is the most important part of chapter 2, okay? You are doing the properties of addition, suppression, multiplication, and division. Now, the first we are going to start with addition. The first property of addition was commutative property of addition. Look, class, I told you commutative property is when you change places, okay? So, commutative property of addition is that when you are adding two numbers, okay, when you are adding two numbers, for example, two natural numbers or two whole numbers. The answer will still remain the same if you change the position of those two numbers. What does this mean? Look, here I am adding 71 plus 25 is equal to 96. You see this example on, on, your, on your slide? Look, 71 plus 25 is equal to 96. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to change the position of 75 from here to here and of 25 from here to here. What will happen is 25 will come here, 71 will come here. So, here you see 25 is coming first. Then we are adding with it with 71. The answer is still the same. So the answer is always going to remain same even if you change the positions of the number. So this is called the commutative property of addition. Okay, now then we moved on to. Okay, now you can write it like this: 71 plus 25 is equal to 25 plus 7. Why? Because the answer of both the sides will be same. 71 plus 25 is also 96. 25 plus 71 is also 96. Okay, then we went, uh, went forward to associative property of addition. Associative property of addition means that when you are making groups of numbers. What do you mean by making groups? You are putting the numbers in brackets. Okay. Now, if you are adding three or more numbers, suppose we are adding two, eight, and five in this example. First, I'm making a group of 2 and 8, okay? Here you can see plus. First, I made this group of 2 and 8. And then I'm adding, then I'm adding 5 to it, okay? So, when I'm adding 2 and 8, first, I'm making a group of 2 and 8. So, I have to solve this group first. So, what is 2 plus 8? 2 plus 8 is 10. So, I write 10 here. Then, I put this addition sign here, okay? And then I write this 5 also here. Okay. So what this becomes? This becomes 10 plus 5 is equal to 15. Okay. Now what associative property says is that when you change the groups, when you change the group, the answer is still going to be the same. Now how I showed this in an example is that look first we made a group of 2 and 8 and now I am going to make a group of 8 and 5. So now I have changed the group from 2 and 8 to 8 and 5. So now I have to solve 8 and 5 first. So 8 plus 5 is equal to 13. Now 2 plus 13 is equal to 15. So if you see this answer, 15 and 15, they are same. This means associative property of addition is saying that when you change group, the answer is still going to be the same. Okay. Okay, class, I'm going to unmute all of you right now. If you have any questions, okay, stay on mute. But if you have any questions, please raise your hand. I think so far this is very easy because we have done it very thoroughly in the class and we have been repeating it in all classes. Okay, we have been repeating the rules in all classes. So I think it is clear to everyone till now. Let's move on to the next. S is the subtraction. Okay, so we have two properties of addition, commutative and associative. Page number 23, you can see subtraction. Page number 23. Okay, now the first property, the first property says that if a natural number or a whole number is subtracted from another natural number or whole number, the difference may not always be a natural number or whole number. We did, we did the rules of uh, natural numbers and whole numbers a while ago. And in that we saw that if you are subtracting natural numbers like we did 50 minus 60, it was coming minus 10. So we know that the answer is not always going to be a natural number. So this means that the closure property does not apply to subtraction.
Okay, so the closure property does not apply to subtraction. But look, but if the number is subtracted from another number that is larger or equal to it, then the result is natural whole number. What this means that if the first number is bigger, is larger than the second number. Here in this example, you can see 12 is greater than 5. So the number, the answer is going to be a natural number or a whole number. Okay. Whenever the first number is larger than the second number, this means that we are subtracting a smaller number from a larger number. The answer is going to be a natural number. And when both the numbers are equal, for example, 5 and 5 are equal here, so 5 minus 5 is going to be 0. This means that it is going to be a whole number. Okay, class, moving on to the next property of subtraction. The second property of subtraction is very easy. Okay, this is the associative property. This is just like the commut sorry, commutative property. In commutative property, you change the position of numbers. So in subtraction, if you change the places of the numbers, for example, 5 and 3, I have changed the position of 5 and 3. I have, I have taken 5 from here to here, and I am taking 3 from left to right, okay? So it becomes 3 minus 5. Now the answer will be a negative number. This means that the answer has changed. When the answer has changed, this means that the commutative property does not apply to subtraction okay class the commutative property does not apply to subtraction the so 5 minus 3 is equal to 2 but when i'm changing the places the answer is going to change this means these two are not equal so you can write it like this 5 minus 3 is not equal to 3 minus 5 so this means that the commutative property does not apply to subtraction Okay, class, moving on to the third property. Okay, class, uh, listen, the class is going to end right now because there is a time limit of 40 minutes. So I'm going to start the class again. Please rejoin. Please rejoin because those who are going to rejoin will be marked present for today. Okay, so please rejoin the class. I'm writing it in the chat as well. So everyone has to rejoin the class, okay? Thank you, Subhayal, for informing me. Okay, class, so we are doing the associative property of subtraction. We saw that in addition, associative property was that when we are changing the group, the answer was remaining the same. But now, this is not the case. This is not the case in subtraction. In subtraction, when you change the group, for example, I made a group of 5 and 2 first. And now I'm going to make a group of 7 and 5. You can see the answer is not coming the same. You can see the example. You can see the example on the slide, on the screen right now. Look, first I made a group of 5 and 2. So I solved this group first. 5 minus 2 is 3. So 7 minus 3 was coming, 4. Now when I make a group of 7 and 5, so 7 minus 5 becomes 2, and 2 minus 2 becomes 0. So the answer is not coming the same, which means the associative property does not apply to the fraction. Okay, so now moving on to the next slide. Okay, the last property, the last property of subtraction is fairly easy. If zero is subtracted from any number, the answer will remain the same. Okay. So when I deduct 0 from 5, for example, 5 minus 0, the answer is coming 5. So if you deduct, if you subtract 0 from any natural whole number, the answer will remain the same, okay? But this is not the case when you write 0 first, okay? So if you subtract a number from 0, the answer is not going to be a whole number. It is going to come in negative. We are going to ignore the negative numbers right now. But just understand that when you deduct a number from 0, the answer is not a whole number. Okay. 
okay class now we are moving on to multiplication multiplication is the repeated addition of the same numbers for example if you have to multiply 4 by 3 4 times 3 means that you have to add 4 3 times so if you add 4 3 times like here i am adding uh, 4 times 3 it is going to become 12 we move on to the rules of multiplication okay look the closure property of multiplication okay the closure pro property is that when you are multiplying two natural numbers or two whole numbers the answer is always going to be a natural number or a whole number then we come on to commutative property commutative property was changing positions so commutative property in multiplication is present okay the so commutative property means that when i am writing 12 multiplied by 5 is equal to 60. Now if i change the position of 5 and 12 5 into 12 is also going to be 60. okay now associative property was also present in multiplication if you change the groups the answer will remain the same okay you can see this on the slide I have changed the groups, but the answer is remaining same. So associative property applies to multiplication. Okay, then we did that whenever a number is multiplied by zero, the answer is always going to be zero. This is the fourth property of multiplication. Whenever you multiply zero by a number, the answer is always going to be zero. Okay, then we came onto the distributive property of multiplication. This was a big problem for every one class. But look carefully, what we are going to do is we are going to multiply a number by a group of number that is added together. Okay. For example, we are multiplying 5 by the group of 6 and 7, and 6 and 7 are being added. So we can say that this group is a sum of two numbers. So a sum of two numbers means that when two numbers are added, in this case, a sum of 6 and 7 is being multiplied by 5. Now how you solve this is first you solve 6 and 7. So 6 plus 7 is 13. When you multiply 13 by 5, the answer is 765. Now what we can do is distributive property. In distributive property, what we do is when you are multiplying a number by the sum of two numbers, what you can do is now you can make two different groups. First you multiply 5 by this first number 6. Okay. So this number 6, first you multiply this by 5, you make this group. 5 multiplied by 6. Then you put this addition sign in between here. Okay. And then what you do, you multiply the 7 also by 5. So all the numbers in the bracket that are added together, they will multiply by 5 individually. First, I multiply 5 and 6, I make a group. I put this addition sign, then I multiply 5 and 7. Okay. So 5 is going to multiply with 7 also and 6 also. So this is the second group. Now we solve these brackets one by one. So 5, 6 are 30, 5, 6 are 30, and 5, 7 are 35. So 35 and 30 will be added. So 30 plus 35 will become 65. So this answer is the same. So this is the distributive law of multiplication. Okay, then we went on to division. Division was also very easy. First, you need to know that it is a repeated subtraction. If I am multi dividing 10 divided by 2, the answer is going to be 5 means that if I deduct 2 5 times from 10, the answer is going to be 0. Yes, Laiba? Uh, sir, please explain the last rule of multiplication again. Okay, Laiba. Okay. okay, now look, distributive property of multiplication is that Look carefully, you just ignore these first three lines, okay? Don't read, read these three lines first, okay? Just pay attention on the example first and then I'll explain the three lines. When you're multiplying a number, for example, you're multiplying five by a group of numbers that are added together, okay? Which means that this is a group and this is a sum of two numbers, six and seven, okay? Okay, first, if you want to solve this, you can add six plus seven is 13. And then you multiply it by 5 and it becomes 65. Okay. Now what we can do is distributive property say that we can break it into two groups. How you break it into two groups is you take this 5 that is outside the bracket. Okay. So you multiply 5. You multiply 5 by 6 first. And then you multiply 5 by 7 also. Okay. So the numbers in the brackets all have to be multiplied individually by this 5. So first you multiply 6 by 5, then you multiply 7 by 5 and you put the addition sign in between. This addition sign comes from here. 
Okay. So you write 5 multiplied by 6 plus 5 multiplied by 7. When you solve this, it becomes 30 plus 35 is equal to 65. So the distributive law says that the answer will not change. If you write it like this, if you convert it into two groups, the answer will not change. Okay, Laiba. Laiba, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, moving on to the next division. Division was a repeated subtraction, and we did this 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. We remember this first number is dividend, second is the divisor, and the answer is called the quotient. So the dividend is divided by divisor. Dividend is divided by divisor, the answer is the quotient. Okay. Okay, now also remember that here the dividend is a multiple of the divisor means. That the dividend is the multiple of divisor means the dividend comes in the table of the divisor. For example, 10 comes in the table of 2. How 2 files are 10? So the answer is the quotient is a whole number. Whenever the first number is a multiple of the second number, whenever the dividend is a multiple of the divisor, the answer will always be a question, it will always be a whole number. Okay, if I write 11 instead of 10, now 11 divided by 2, you cannot solve the answer will become 5.5. So 5.5 is not a whole number or a natural number, okay? 5.5 so is not a whole number if you write 11 instead of 10. Okay, the first property. First property is when a whole number is divided by another whole number, which is not a zero. Okay, this second number cannot be a zero. The number after the division sign cannot be a zero. The answer will not always be a whole number. So this means that the closure property does not apply to division also. Okay. So whenever a whole number is divided by another number, the answer is not always going to be a whole number. Okay. Second property class was if the divisor and dividend changes places, divisor and dividend, what are divisor and dividend? Here the dividend is 8 and the divisor is 4 in the first example. In the second example, I've changed the places and I have made 4 the dividend and 8 the divisor. The answer is not going to be the same. This means that commutative does not apply to division. Similarly, class associative property also does not apply to division. Here you can see I'm changing those of I'm writing 8 divided by 4, then I'm writing 4 divided by 2, then I'm writing 8 divided by 8. So when you're changing the groups, when you're changing the groups, for example, I'm using three numbers, 8, 4, and 2. Now, if I'm changing the groups, the answer will not be the same. So, the associated property does not apply to division. Okay, then the last property was very easy. If you divide any number by 1, the answer will be the number itself. Okay, so if you divide 4 by 1, 0 by 1, 100 by 1, 2000 by 1, the answer is going to be the same number that you're dividing by 1. Okay, now 0 divided by any non-zero number, we did this in the property of 0 as well. When you divide 0 by any number, the answer is always going to be 0. But always please remember that the second number means the divisor cannot be 0. Okay, class. Okay, class, then we did exercise 2b and we did decimal system yesterday in which we did the place value and the face value. Okay, so the face value was, if I write a number 5 to 4, 6, the face value is going to be the number itself. For example, here in both examples, if I ask what is the face value of 4, it will be always be 4. So the face value is just the number itself, but the place value is different. For example, in 5 to 4, say the place value of 4 is 40. In the second example, the place value of 4 is 400. In the third example, the place value of 4 is 4000. So the difference in face value and place value is the face value is just the value of the number itself. But the place value depends on the position. Acha class, we are going to uh, stop the revision right now because I think I have explained everything. Now, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand and ask a question and then we are going to end the class. Okay, before before taking questions, everyone, please, please be sure Monday is going to be the test day. A short test will be taken on Monday. A short test. I am writing it on the chat as well. A short test will be taken on Monday from chapter 2 only. Okay, from chapter 2 only. So please, guys, over the weekend, over the weekend class, you have to 
you have to study chapter 2 okay pay attention class you have to study chapter 2 and then i am going to take a short test on monday and you will be starting chapter 3 also okay anyone has any question please raise your hand yes sadia sir aap to online lenge ya abhi jaise class mein ya hum bhejenge no i i will i will uh, take it in the class i will take it in the class okay sadia Okay, class. Those who want to leave can leave the class now, and those who have question can stay now. Okay, so you have your science class as well. So please be quick. Anyone has any question? Yes, uh, Emil. How will you take this? But I will. I will give a simple questions like we have done in SS two A and two B. I will be giving the questions. I will be just changing the questions a bit, but they will be similar to exercise two A and two B. Okay, so practice from exercise two A, two B, and multiple choice question two also practice from there, and I'll take a very short test. I'll give the test in the class, and we'll and we'll decide how to do it. Don't worry about it. I will tell you all about it on Monday. Okay, just remember that there is a test on Monday, and the test is going to be from 10 marks okay the test is going to be of 10 marks okay i am going to unmute everyone i am going to unmute everyone but please ask question one by one himayal you have any question sir? no sir okay thank you okay so bhai your question please sir can we leave yes beta if you don't have any question you can leave so bhai you have any question beta <laughs> Sir, okay, Sara, will they roof? Yes. Sir, we can leave the class. Yes, beta. Yes. If you don't have any question, you can leave. Tell us, beta. If you don't have to raise hand on the video, there is an option in your in your Zoom. You have to raise hand there. Okay. Tell us, ask question. Tell us. Tell us, shy. So, Bayer, you are not on mute anymore. Please ask question if you want to ask. Anyone has any question, class? Anyone has any questions? Sir, 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 today's homework is what? Beta, you have to prepare for the test on Monday. Okay, there is a test on Monday. Just prepare for it. Okay. Okay, sir. So, Bayer, beta, I have unmuted you. If you want to ask question, you can ask on the chat. Then, if you can't use your mic, you can ask on the chat. Okay. Anyone else has any question? Mustafiz, Memuna, Himayal. No. No. Okay, then you can leave, beta. You have a science class. We have the science class. Uh, okay, sir. Quickly go and attend the science class. Good. Okay. Mustafiz. Jim. Okay. Allah Hafiz. Then goodbye. Allah Hafiz.